Hello, everyone. So I'm from SoftLayer. Uh, Jonathan Whistler is my name. Do we have the slides up here? Okay. And I'm going to talk about uh, big data. And obviously, big data is growing and it's accelerating quickly. So we built both a software and a hardware platform so that you can manage this big data and make it useful for you. So the title is Store, st store Scale and Find Your Data. And uh, that last one is quite important. So the question is, there's a lot of stats on big data and how big is it? So I, I put together some graphs to show not only how big it is, but how fast it's growing. So just as a benchmark, I said, what's the total megabits for an MP3 or a, a, a photo? And they average, you know, debatable around four megs, right? And then I said, okay, what's the capacity on my phone, my HTC sensation? You know, and then you see that the, I can store a lot of photos in MP3s. Then I said, okay, let's look at the largest library in the world, Library of Congress, and all the data they have. And you see these other things are starting to disappear on the graph. Then I said, let's look at the, the largest retailer in the world and one that's actually been pretty proactive in getting customer data. And again, the Library of Congress, the number of books is just disappearing on this graph. So then let's look at our, our friends Google and what they do on a daily basis. And as you can see, all these uh, other things that looked big before are now disappearing. So now let's look at uh, Facebook photos, right? And again, I did an average, but you'll see that that's dwarfing everything in terms of graph. And you see the acceleration, right? So Walmart that's been around for a while, they should have a lot of data. You know, the Facebook photos is just dwarfing what amount of data they have. And then I took one, and this is also arguable, but I just picked one of the numbers, and it says this is the total internet traffic. And I actually read a statistic yesterday that said if you printed all the digital content out there into books, you could make a stack that went from the Earth to Pluto 10 times and back, right? So that's just a massive amount of data. So what are we going to do with that? It's huge. There's massive amounts out there, and how do you manage that, and how do you store it, and how do you do this scalable? So at SoftLayer, we said we had a goal. We said let's deliver an object storage platform that's integrated to CDNs and search. And we said, okay, it's got to be on commodity hardware because it's got to be fast. It's got to scale up and down as needed. We want to use open source technology because that's always improving uh, and it's free, mostly. It's got to be scalable and it's got to be accessible through an API. So the most logical choice, because we're a hosting company, we said OpenStack is growing in the cloud software space. They have some very good components. And for what we wanted to do, uh, OpenStack was the best choice for us. Why is that? Uh, what it does is it gives a common infrastructure. So if you have different uh, inputs and outputs, you, you have some sort of common infrastructure. It's really scalable, which is key for us and key for managing the massive amounts of data. Um, we did it on Python. Uh, and I'm not an engineer, but that was our engineer's choice so that we can uh, do bug fixes and enhancements quickly. And at the end, what we developed is Swift platform. It's a good Unix system. And really, at the end of the day, what, what needs to happen is it just has to work. So that's why we chose OpenStack. On the other side, we said, OK, you can have the software that runs, but also you need very robust hardware. You need hardware you can scale up and scale down, which you can do on our platform. Um, put some pictures in there. And what's it need to do? It needs to be fast, right? And what we did when we were looking at the hardware configuration, we said, OK, let's throw away this, this concept of RAID. I'm not saying that RAID is not a good configuration, because it is for a lot of purposes. But what we want to do is get something more commodity so you can run and burn disk space and get the performance without being attached to a RAID cluster. So what that gives you is a, a global distribution network that's just very robust and fast. So we, we implemented three main clusters, one in Singapore, one in Dallas, and one in Amsterdam. Um, and then you know, computing power is only half of the equation, so it's connected through our, our global network of data centers and points of presence. So it gives us a pretty good global reach. So when we were doing OpenStack, we didn't really modify it that much. Uh, we only made a couple of modifications to support BSD, and, and again, those were, were minor. We leveraged our existing user interface, and the key thing was to make sure that it uh, included our API keys so that you could build some sort of automated system and you didn't have to do anything manually. The CDN integration, right, because all that data I showed before, that's coming from different parts of the world, so we needed to make sure that the data would be close to the end user, um, integrated into our API, and we implemented it as a WSGI middleware so that you can write web apps and database apps, and this will just be uh, communicating in between the two. So 
this kind of highlights both the problems and the opportunities we're going to have with search because I showed you the massive amounts of data and if you look at file metadata, this is for a, a photo, right? It says here you have a JPEG, we know it's a JPEG, here's the date, uh, here's the size. So that's the file system and what kind of data you can get. Now with the object metadata, there's just a lot more you can, you know, you can say okay, here's the, the manufacturer, uh, here's the model, here's the resolution, here's the pixel dimension and then you can add a number of categories on top of that. But as you can imagine when you go to having a few different fields to, you know, an unlimited number or quite a few, it makes the search that much more complex. Right, so again you go from, okay, I have a document, there's some sort of tag around it, now I have several documents, several thousand, several million documents, and then I have all the meta on top of that. So as you can imagine, that's quite a bit to search. So that was a key part of it. And then when we were talking to our customers, we said, what are the common pain points used in large scale object storage? And the big deal was information retrieval. So what we want to do is give you guys uh, secondary indexing so you can find your files by whatever means necessary and integrate that into our API. And again, it has to be scalable and the scalability has to be predictable. So how do you get started? Um, I would go to open, OpenStack, uh, read their documentation, it's very well documented and then you can install, configure and run. And then this is something I often forget to do and, and I hope you guys are doing it but when you accomplish your goals, don't forget to celebrate. This is just a, a window into our portal on how easy it is to, to manage. And now the, the software pitch of course, we have 100,000 servers, 24,000 customers and 23 million domains. So we know a few things about scale and, and that's what this uh, object storage is to help you guys is to help you scale. It's all connected through 13 data centers, 16 network pops with 20 gig fiber connections because server side is one piece but if the network's not fast then you don't get the speed you need. And with that, I'll wrap it up. I don't know if that was 10 minutes or, okay. Because I thought it was 10 minutes so I made a 10 minute presentation. <laughs>